Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video review. Uh, this time we are looking at the iPads port uh, wireless air mouse, IR slash RF. I'll explain this in a bit. But uh, yeah, it's uh, no, I'm no stranger to having random uh, wireless keyboard mouse all-in-one solutions. And just these are two previous examples of iPads port uh, devices. And I use this guy like... <laughs> Religiously, almost. Uh, anytime I have to uh, be working on a machine that I don't want to have like a full mouse and keyboard set up, like any kind of like server hidden away in the closet sort of thing, I grab one of these, I remove the dongle from the back, and I plug it in, and I use this uh, to set up computers. And it works fantastically for that. I've used these for presentations, actually, uh, where I just plug the, the dongle into the computer, and then I can press next and back to advance slides and whatnot. And so I love this guy. The battery lasts forever. It has an IR remote that's fully programmable. And so this is fantastic. Uh, if you have like an Android TV box or a home theater PC, you need to get one of these. This guy is sort of very similar, but a different form factor. This guy uses uh, non-rechargeable batteries. All, all their other remotes use rechargeable batteries, but for some reason this uses AAAs. Uh, it's okay. Uh, this will work in a pinch, but I find that the, the, like the touch pad area is a bit too small. It's about the same size, but for some reason it just feels smaller, I guess because it's recessed. Uh, here you can go right up to the edge. So I really like this style more than this, but uh, iPassport reached out and wanted to send me this guy, which I guess is a variation on this kind of remote, except for uh, it gives you a couple of added features. For starters, this is an air mouse, so you can actually switch it, and this has a gyroscope inside, so you can point this at the screen a la Wiimote functionality, and I'll show you in a sec, I'll demo it, but it actually works pretty decently well. It's not like super fast, uh, but it's way better than uh, the older style of like Android TV remote. You have to press the buttons and like keep clicking them in a direction to have the mouse slowly scroll in that direction. That sucks. This is way better of an implementation. Uh, additionally, it has a full keyboard on the back, and this is like the rubber dome topped uh, snap clicky dome underneath kind of setup and it feels fantastic to type on you can type decently fast and just the tactile feel of this is fantastic definitely a good implementation especially having the arrow keys and whatnot and on the other side um you have basically this tv button when you press it uh you can switch between uh this comes with a dongle which i have actually plugged it into my uh my android tv box right now and the dongle is RF, but this also has an IR LED. So you can program this, uh, pretty much any of these keys you can program to control functions on your TV. So I can turn on and off my TV, which I have. You can't see it, but it's it's that way. Uh, I'm not going to press this right now. I don't want to turn on my TV. But yeah, you can use this to control both the TV and like a connected USB smart device. Uh, which is absolutely fantastic. I've been using this for just surfing, uh, watching like YouTube videos on my TV, and uh, yeah, it, this works fantastically. And likewise, you could also use this just like as a pr presentation tool for like going through slides and whatnot. Uh, when you plug this into a Windows computer, the dongle, it just shows up as a keyboard. So uh, you can use this as a keyboard and mouse. Uh, the air mouse functionality works on Windows, I've tested. I'm sure it would work in like Mac and uh, Linux as well. It's It just enumerates as like a mouse and a keyboard. So it's fantastic. Uh, definitely the price on this. Currently, I think it's about 24 bucks and then there's like a 20% off coupon. So you can get this easily for under 20 bucks. It's an absolute no brainer. If you don't have one of these, um, I would prefer this size, but I could definitely understand when you're giving a presentation, this is a lot weirder looking, you holding, than something that looks like a slim remote. So yeah, maybe this would be more beneficial if you wanted to use this like in a business application or whatnot. But they're both roughly the same functionality wise. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, this does have a built in microphone. So if you have this connected to like an Android device, you can actually use uh, voice control. Uh, you do have to press and hold this, uh, this microphone slash mouse button uh, to do that. And if you short press this button, it'll toggle between uh, mount, air mouse mode and not air mouse mode, which you just use the directional keys to, to move around. But yeah, uh, lastly, there's a micro USB 
connector for charging. There's an internal battery. This does seem to last like a, a very long time. I, I've charged this once when I got it and then never again. I've been using this for like probably close to about like two months. So <laughs> uh, battery life seems very good. Uh, I would have wished that was USB-C. That's just personal preference. But anyway, let me take you to the TV. I'll get this set up and uh, give you guys a quick demo of it working and how to use this. Uh, one thing to note, uh, this, uh, like I said, you could program this with another remote. So, for example, I can grab this remote. Uh, this power button is uh, programmed for my TV to turn it on. Uh, if you press and hold the TV button... Uh, it, you have to hold it for like a good 10 or 15 seconds. It'll flash the light above it. And uh, so the light is by color. It's red and green. I, I think red is IR mode. So when you click a button and it lights up red, it means it's sending the IR signal. If you uh, click this and it lights up green when you press any of the other buttons, then that means it's sending it through the RF channel. Uh, so to program this, you have to press and hold this and then it'll start slow blinking. And then you can, um, you start, uh, I think you hold the button that you want to program. So for in this example, you hold the power button and then you hold the button on the transmitting remote that you want to send the code over to here. And then it'll flash this light. And then I believe you just press the TV button again to exit. Uh, and now that button is programmed. So let me uh, take you to the, the TV. I'll get everything set up and give you guys a quick demo of this. Okay, so here I have my TV. Uh, we have the remote here. Make sure that it's in the flashy flash mode. So when I press this power button, this will turn red and now it's sending the IR signal. Just turned on the TV. Uh, we have my Android TV box here with the USB dongle. It's like one of these tiny slimline dongles. One complaint I have, uh, that dongle, there's nowhere, a lot of these will have like a slot. You can put that dongle for storing, for traveling. Here, there's no slot, so it's just loose. So you have to make sure you do not lose this dongle, that you keep it with this. So yeah, I would just like carry like a, a sandwich bag that I put all this in to, to transport it. But anywho, yeah, you can see it turned on the TV. If I press this again... Uh, let's see. Okay, so here we are. I am in digital mode, so I can scroll around with this remote. And because this is RF, not IR right now, uh, it's just transmitting through the USB dongle. I don't even have to be facing it. I could be in a different room as long as I'm within range. This remote will work. And it's pretty responsive. I can scroll right through. No button misses, nothing. It works really well. And so if I go in here and I press the uh, the mic slash mouse icon button, it'll bring up the air mouse. So you can see here I'm actually moving my hand to control the cursor directly. And I can directly click something uh, with the OK button in the center then to select that. And yeah, that works really well. And to exit from that mode, you just click the mouse button again, and then now I can use the D-pad directly. So the the downside of this is uh, it's, I mean, there's an accelerometer that's out sensing it, but it's uh, it's kind of open loop, sort of. So for instance, if I go off the screen, I can keep moving this, and the mouse cursor can no longer move off the screen, obviously. But now when I move it back, it's like way off from center. So I have to kind of like push it back to like center it. Another way of centering it, other than going off the side of the screen, is just to click the mouse button again and like reposition your hand now and then click it again to turn it on. And then now it's synchronized. But yeah, like if you're using this long term over multiple menus, you're probably it's probably going to accumulate error and get off track. So you're going to need to like recenter it to get it to work right. But yeah, works pretty well. Um, I guess just for fun, let's just see. Uh, if I go over to apps, I can just start my YouTube and uh, we'll just play like one of my videos or something like that. Just give you a quick demo. And there you go. Then just go to search. And then all I have to do is flip this over and then I can just start typing. And then I can see the icon right here. So I can select that and I can select my trailer video. And yeah, just disable that and it should start playing. 
the uh yeah there you go the volume just shoot that up there yeah that works just fine I can use left and right to scroll through. Sorry about the handheld nature of this. And yeah, we're looking at my mini disc collection, apparently. <laughs> yeah, and exit out. And to go home, uh, you can just press and hold that home slash back button. And yeah, and it just backs right out into it and it works great. Uh, as like a remote for like home media center sort of things, this is very good. <laughs> Has dedicated buttons for YouTube, Netflix, and Google Play, apparently. Uh, this TV has YouTube and Netflix. I don't, I don't think there's a, an actual Google Play. They have their own uh, app store sort of thing. But I think that... Yeah, in this case, I don't think it works because uh, the Android TV is maybe expecting a certain signal or the remote sending a signal that it expects the TV to pick up on, but it's not. But yeah, you can always take these buttons and reprogram them to do something else. So I'm not really too worried about that. But yeah, super responsive. Works really good. Uh, super long battery life. So and it works really good both as a regular remote, an air mouse, and the keyboard portion works fantastically. So yeah, uh, I am able to turn off the TV box using this remote uh, when it's in the RF mode. Uh, but I cannot turn it on again because it requires an IR signal. It can't wake from USB. That's a limitation of the TV box and not necessarily this remote. Uh, if you were to plug this into a computer, most computers will allow you to wake from USB. So you can actually wake up the computer using this power button on the remote while it's in RF mode. Uh, I'm, I am going to go through and reprogram all these buttons in the IR mode to match the uh, extra buttons on this remote that the uh, TV box came with. Uh, just to make sure that I'm able to fully control everything. And to turn off the TV, I just put this into IR mode and press the power button and she goes off. So yeah, fantastic. Ah, second time filming this, I forgot to hit record. I got my fingernail under here and uh, you can, they're just clips all around and it's actually pretty easy to get in there. Would have been easier with like a, a credit card or like a very thin screwdriver. But yeah, rubber membrane keys, uh, they're just like, double I don't think they're double injection molded they're just screen printed on top uh, but what is interesting is if I can get this back in yeah there we go uh, this is pretty thick silicone and there is like a protective vinyl sheet all around the button so if water did get in it would be somewhat resistant to any kind of damage uh, the buttons are just these metal domes super clicky and uh, yeah there we go. And we have the three millimeter IR LED, the tiny little microphone. The board's only held in with, as far as I can see, two screws, one in each corner here, tiny little Phillips. We have the LEDs and we have a bunch of spots for LEDs on the board. I guess there's a version, which looking at the box, yeah, there's standard backlights and voice. We have the voice obviously, but uh, the backlit version obviously has these LEDs soldered in and they probably use like double injection molded slightly translucent uh, membranes here so that it shines through and undoubtedly on the back probably as well. So I'd be interested if I could just solder LEDs in here and if it would just light up that would be that'd be really cool if the circuitry is there. Uh, we have the main chip here which is obviously what's transmitting the Bluetooth. There's an oscillator uh, like a crystal here for that, that's probably where all the firmware is stored. And there's a second chip here, which is a SOIC, and this is probably just uh, breaks out the keyboard and it multiplexes it. So this probably just talks to this chip, which then reads the entire keyboard. Uh, so that's probably a cheap, easy way of doing that. The battery is on a connector, so conceivably you could pretty easily replace the battery. That's fantastic. There's a USB micro connector, which obviously does charging. I can't tell if the data pins are connected, but interestingly enough, there's a USB like header here uh, because it has the DM and DP uh, signal. So this is this would actually enumerate. I guess that's for firmware uploading. Uh, so they would come in with like pins that would connect to that, and that's how they flash the firmware onto this chip. Uh, we have two connectors for uh, I guess if you wanted to hard solder a battery in place of this guy. Uh, looks like there's just a diode for protection on the USB side so it doesn't back charge stuff. 
Let's see if the battery comes off. There we go, no markings. Uh, the battery is pretty, it's small, but it, it's pretty thick. And on here, we can see the battery's rating is apparently 300 milliamp hours, and that actually tracks with the size of this battery physically. So that, I think they're telling the truth on that. It says working current is less than 9 milliamps, and standby is less than 25 microamps. So this should last quite a while just sitting in a drawer in a backpack. So that's definitely good. Build quality is really good. Really happy with this. And the fact that it's so easy to open... Uh, means if the battery ever dies, I could easily just solder in my own battery or just get one with the same connector and bam, golden. Goes back together quite easily as well. Everything clicks, no screws. There we go, and you're good as new. So yeah, uh, once again, huge thanks to iPassport. If you do not have one of these already, please do yourself a favor and get one of these. Uh, they're definitely cheap enough and they are definitely useful enough to, to warrant getting... Uh, at least a couple of these. I would get one for home, one for work, and just leave it in the desk at work. Anywho, uh, once again, huge thanks for iPassport for sending this guy in for review. And uh, I can't wait to see what new keyboards they come out with in the future because um, there's definitely a lot of variation amongst all their products. Uh, they definitely are trying to hit like one of each kind of target demographic. So definitely excited to see what they have upcoming in the future. Anywho... I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.